God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night I with the light of her her. From the mountains to the prairies to the ocean white with foam god bless america my home sweet home now everybody sing my distinct honor and privilege to speak to this august body about our very famous public servant jeff stevens you know we go way back with jeff like over 30 years and we have nurtured him through countless elections and administrations and now finally he reaches the apex of his career president of the united states <laughs> Jeff is going to make a great president for us. He's got the heart. He's got the imagination. He's got the drive. He's got the intelligence. And he's also got a good sense of humor. So I'm supporting Jeff, and I know all of you are. And let's give Jeff a round of applause, and we'll see him in the White House. Underdogs do win, and Jeff has proven it several times, and I do think that we have a chance. So, Jeff, the floor is yours. I love you. Good luck to you. Thanks. And go for it. Thank you, Sherry. And Jude and Tony and Larry, and all of you for being here today. Thank you very much. I really didn't expect to hear such nice things until my funeral, so I hope, uh, I hope you'll save some of them. What I'd like everybody to do, if you could, is close your eyes for a second. I'm going to try to send you back into yesteryear. They used to do on the old radio programs, Edward R. Murrow. So just close your eyes for a moment and listen to these words. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers and mothers faced on this continent an economic calamity, the likes of which the world had never seen. A Republican businessman sat in the White House, paralyzed into inaction as fear and loathing gripped the faces of millions of unemployed Americans. A stock market crash was followed by the passage of the Smoot-Hawley tariffs, which ensured that the world would share our nation's misery. Dark and sinister forces threatened democracies and free market capitalism at home and throughout the world. Adolf Hitler was elected Chancellor of Germany in that year. But in the land of Lincoln, Walt Whitman's great city of broad shoulders welcomed a middle-aged New Yorker with a big head and an infectious smile who promised a new deal for the American people. A year later, he would assure us that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself, and the world would never be the same. You can open your eyes now. Four score and seven years later, we find ourselves with a Republican businessman in the White House, saddled with scandals of his own making and issuing executive orders for high tariffs which threaten the longest economic e expansion in modern history. Not even Donald J. Trump can repeal the law of supply and demand. Isolationist Republicans in the 1930s railed against outsiders, immigrants, and foreigners, and their cousins in the Klan donned white robes and masks as they paraded down boulevards 
from Indiana to our great state of Florida. There were not great people on both sides two years ago in Charlottesville, Virginia. And there weren't great people present in the anti-Semitic America First rallies decades ago. We're on the cusp of another civil war in our land today, thanks to the hateful and shameful rhetoric tweeting from that man in the White House. Will you join me in a crusade to evict Donald Trump from 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue? Yes. yes. <laughs> and left off part of it, and his obnoxious cronies who have soiled that sacred ground. I believe that this nation should commit itself before the decade of the 20s is out of ensuring the health of every American man, woman, and child by repealing Trump's tax cuts on the wealthiest among us, passing a federal lottery, and legalizing the sale and possession of recreational marijuana and taxing the hell out of it. It is a federal issue, Tony. I've learned, I've learned some facts, stubborn things. The president ought to introduce himself to some facts sometime, but the federal government does regulate marijuana and does prohibit it everywhere. States have just taken it upon themselves, taken the initiative to legalize it, but technically they're doing it in violation of federal law. But the federal government hasn't done anything about it yet. And the federal government shouldn't. The federal government should get out of the way and simply repeal the law that, that makes it illegal nationwide. So it is a federal issue. Um, Social Security and Medicare can be saved. They're in dire straits. The money is running out, but they can be saved in the same way. It is criminal and shameful that in the richest nation in the history of the world, we have homeless citizens dying in our streets and in the woods. That's shameful. This is America. We're a nation of immigrants. We are a welcoming and good people. We don't need a lying, conniving philanderer to make us great. There's more goodness, grace, and dignity in one poor migrant asylum seeker striving to be free than in all the Trump administration combined. There will never be a wall between America and for which it stands. And Mexico will never pay for it. We need a safe and sound immigration reform bill which protects the young dreamers out there in our midst who are here through no fault of their own. They just want to live the American dream. We need a sound bill that the Congress would pass if its leaders would, would take up the initiative. One that reflects the values of all the American people. Now, most of you know me. I happen to be a middle-aged, overweight, white Republican male running for president. But I can't beat Donald Trump on my good looks alone. <laughs> I need your help. Facebook your friends. Blow up social media. Did I say that right? That's not a call to arms. But blow up social media. Start spreading the word that there's a new kind of Republican out there willing to fight the good fight for our country, which never sleeps. I need nine million people to donate twenty dollars and twenty cents and we'll blow Donald J. Trump right out of the water. I believe in the two-party system. It has served our nation well for 200 years. Our country is becoming less white and more colorful every day. Millennials and interneters, it's a word I just coined, see the world differently 
from those of us over 50. That's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Republican candidates ought to be open. They ought to open their eyes to this new reality. Young Americans are more open-minded and liberal in their beliefs than their parents or their grandparents. The changing demographic is a fact. Dealing with change is hard for some of us old timers, except for Larry. I do not shrink from that responsibility. I welcome it. Although the perils are daunting, the opportunities facing the American people today are greater than they've ever been. The American dream is alive and well, living right here in Brooksville, Florida. I want to make America good again, from Iowa to New Hampshire, from South Carolina to California. God bless you all, and God bless America. Thank you.